Throughout the history of the United States, there have been a total of 46 presidents. So what exactly did each of them accomplish? Let's find out. George Washington was the nation's first president. He led the country through the Revolutionary War and established presidential precedents. John Adams avoided a full-scale war with France during the XYZ affair, a diplomatic crisis where American diplomats were asked for bribes by French agents. He also passed the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Alien Acts allowed the government to deport immigrants considered dangerous, while the Sedition Act targeted those who criticized the government. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. He completed the Louisiana Purchase and founded the University of Virginia. James Madison led the country through the War of 1812 and contributed to the writing of the Constitution. James Monroe issued the Monroe Doctrine, which declared that the Americas were off-limits to further colonization by European powers and that any attempt to colonize or interfere in the affairs of nations in the Western Hemisphere would be seen as a threat to the United States. John Quincy Adams supported internal improvements and defended the Amistad slaves before the Supreme Court. Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act in 1830, which resulted in the forced relocation of Native American tribes from their ancestral lands in the southeastern United States to areas west of the Mississippi River, a tragic event known as the Trail of Tears. Martin Van Buren's presidency was overshadowed by the Panic of 1837, a severe economic depression triggered by the collapse of banks and widespread unemployment. William Henry Harrison died after only a month in office, became the shortest presidential term in the history of United States. John Tyler was the first vice president to succeed to the presidency. Tyler was a strong advocate for the annexation of Texas, and his administration pursued negotiations to bring Texas into the Union. James Polk acquired California in the Southwest from Mexico after the Mexican-American War. The Zachary Taylor presidency was cut short when he died of acute gastroenteritis just over a year into his term. His death elevated Vice President Millard Fillmore to the presidency. Millard Fillmore supported the Compromise of 1850, which temporarily postponed the Civil War. Franklin Pierce enforced the controversial Kansas-Nebraska Act that allowed the residents of Kansas and Nebraska territories to decide whether or not slavery was allowed. James Buchanan faced the escalating secession crisis and was unable to prevent the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln led the country through the Civil War. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation and promoted the passage of the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. Andrew Johnson oversaw Reconstruction after the Civil War. His disagreements with the radical Republicans in Congress led to his impeachment by the House of Representatives in 1868. Ulysses Grant signed Enforcement Acts in 1870, aimed at combating violent activities by the Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist groups. Rutherford Hayes supported a return to the gold standard and signed the Specie Resumption Act of 1875, which aimed to stabilize the country's currency by redeeming paper money and gold. James Garfield promoted civil service reform and was assassinated early in his term. Chester Arthur supported civil service reform and oversaw the completion of the Brooklyn Bridge. Grover Cleveland supported the Dawes Act of 1887 which aimed to assimilate Native Americans by breaking up tribal land ownership and allotting individual plots of land to Native families. Benjamin Harrison signed the Sherman Antitrust Act in 1890 to prevent monopolistic practices and promote fair competition in business and commerce. Grover Cleveland's second term began during the midst of the Panic in 1893, a severe economic depression. His administration took steps to address the crisis, including repeal of the Sherman Silver Purchase Act and efforts to stabilize the gold standard. William McKinley led the country through the Spanish-American War. He annexed the Philippines, Puerto Rico, and Guam. Theodore Roosevelt expanded national parks, negotiated the end of the Russo-Japanese War, led the construction of the Panama Canal, 
and work to regulate big businesses. William Howard Taft continued Roosevelt's trust-busting efforts, initiating a significant number of antitrust lawsuits against large corporations to break up monopolies and promote fair competition. Woodrow Wilson led the U.S. during World War I and promoted the League of Nations, an international organization aimed at promoting cooperation and preventing future conflicts. Despite his efforts, the United States did not join the League due to opposition in the Senate. Warren Harding advocated for a return to normalcy after the tumultuous years of World War I. During his term, he faced one of the most significant scandals in American political history, the Teapot Dome scandal, which involved the illegal leasing of federal oil reserves to private oil companies. While Harding himself was not directly involved, several members of his administration were implicated, leading to a tarnished reputation. Calvin Coolidge focused on limited government and business-friendly policies. Coolidge's presidency was marked by a period of economic prosperity and relative stability, often referred to as the Roaring Twenties. The country experienced significant economic growth and increased consumer spending during this time. Herbert Hoover presidency was largely defined by the onset of the Great Depression, which began with the stock market crash of 1929. He implemented various relief measures such as Emergency Banking Act, raising tariffs, limited government intervention, unemployment relief, and federal farm board. Franklin Roosevelt led the country through the Great Depression and World War II, implemented New Deal programs and established Social Security. Harry Truman made the decision to drop atomic bombs on Japan, established the Truman Doctrine and Marshall Plan, and oversaw the early stages of the Cold War. Dwight Eisenhower led the country during the Cold War and initiated the interstate highway system. John Kennedy initiated the Apollo program to set the ambitious goal of sending the first American astronaut to the moon and returning safely in 1960. He also played a significant role in advancing civil rights and faced the Cuban Missile Crisis when the United States and the Soviet Union came close to nuclear war in 1962. Lyndon Johnson passed significant civil rights legislation. He implemented great society programs and escalated U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Richard Nixon opened diplomatic relations with China. He signed arms control agreements and resigned due to the Watergate scandal. Gerald Ford's most controversial decisions was to pardon Richard Nixon, his predecessor, for any crimes he might have committed during the Watergate scandal. Ford's decision to pardon Nixon continued to be a topic of debate throughout his presidency and likely contributed to his narrow loss in the 1976 presidential election to Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter negotiated the Camp David Accords and faced energy crises and economic difficulties. Ronald Reagan advocated for conservative economic policies, known as the Reaganomics. He played a role in ending the Cold War. George Herbert Walker Bush oversaw the end of the Cold War and led the U.S. during the Gulf War. Bill Clinton advocated for economic growth and balanced budgets. He also implemented the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy in the U.S. military, which allowed gay and lesbian service members to serve as long as they kept their sexual orientation private. George Walker Bush responded to the 9-11's attacks and initiated the war in Iraq. He faced criticism for the handling of Hurricane Katrina. Barack Obama implemented the Affordable Care Act and focused on economic recovery. He also withdrew U.S. troops from Iraq. Donald Trump signed the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act law in 2017 to stimulate economic growth. He pushed for stricter immigration enforcement, including efforts to build a border wall between U.S. and Mexico. President Trump ordered a drone strike to kill an Iranian general Qasem Soleimani on January 3, 2020. Joe Biden stumbled while walking up the stairs of Air Force One. He recovered quickly and gave a salute before entering the plane. His speeding recovery was the result of his fondness with ice cream.